Hello, today is January the 16th, 2016. This is Wes Fryer, and I'm here in Manhattan, Kansas with my father, Tom Fryer, and we're going to talk about his life growing up in Powell, Wyoming, and things he remembers from living there, being in school, and things about his family. So, how did your parents come to be in Powell, Wyoming? Well, my first of all, my dad was a, uh, a Rexall uh, pharmacist, and he got his uh, degree in that from South Dakota State at Brookings. Um, my mom was uh, grew up in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. When they married, and before they moved to Powell, they were actually up in Montana. Uh, that's where my uh, older, where my sister uh, Marge, who's twelve years older than I am, Marge was was born in. Um, Montana. What were your parents' they, full names? Okay, my dad was uh, Albert R. Fryer Jr. He there were um, ten brothers and sisters, uh, six girls and four boys, and then my mom was uh, Lydia Alice Howard. And having grown up, like I say, in uh, Scotts Bluff, so they moved to Powell uh, in 1934, six years before I was uh, born. And they uh, they moved there primarily because M- Mom's sister Marai uh, had a uh, uh, a drugstore there, pharmacy, hmm. and uh, so Marai had the drugstore originally. Yeah, it was originally Daily Drug, and then uh, she needed uh, she needed another pharmacist, I guess, and so they moved down there in '34. And had your dad and then, been a pharmacist in Montana? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd been a pharmacist ever since he graduated from South Dakota State in. Let's see, he was born in 03, so uh, uh, I think he got his degree in 22. So he'd been a pharmacist for like 12 years before they moved to... Uh, he'd been a pharmacist actually in uh, Nebraska a little when they got married and then, and then when they moved to uh, Montana. Do you remember what Montana town they lived in? Several. They lived Haver. I think it's Haver was where Marge was born. And then they, they lived in several others. Haver, Haver's the only one that I really remember. So it was that. six years before you were born that they moved there, and then he started working in the Rexall drugstore right away. That was because yeah. that's why. Well, you it was there. it was Daily Drug, I think, originally, and then uh, at some point it became well when it became Friar's Pharmacy. We got to see if Marge, then, by the way, still has the Friar Pharmacy sign in the basement or something. There was, you yeah, know, maybe, that that yeah. where if that ever yeah someone yeah. still has that. So anyway, uh, then I entered the world on uh, August 21st of 1940. Uh, we lived at uh, 365 North Bernard and Powell, and that was the only home I, I knew until I uh, left home after I uh, graduated from high school in 1958. So my uh, earliest recollection, um, well, first of all, as far as the home, it was a... Um, they say there were three bedrooms upstairs, but only one bath, and I'll elaborate on that in a minute. And then we we did have a a basement, kind of an unfurnished uh, uh, basement, but with um, visitors that we had, two family. Um, uh, my I think every one of my dad's um, brothers and sisters at one time or another made a a visit to Powell. And like I say, we'd get, we'd always have company. And, you know, here now in, in Manhattan, we live in a home with four, four uh, bathrooms. And in Powell, we only had one, which... Even I'm for the always, guests. Oh, yeah, even for the guests, which caused a, a scheduling uh, problem. And on, sometimes, and I can't remember where, when we got air conditioning either, cause I, and it may even be after I uh, graduated from high school in 58, because I know sometimes, uh, and Powell gets warm in the summertime, July and August especially, and I would go downstairs because it was always much cooler in the basement than it was uh, was upstairs. So, uh, so what do you remember about elementary school, and, and okay. what are your, some of your first recollections of the house well, or, or living in Powell? Earliest recollections, um, well, for, first of all, as far as school, I, elementary the, the, at that time, Powell had one elementary, one junior high, one high school. Now, of course, they have more elementaries. And I don't remember as far as teachers, and some of this, I don't remember my as much myself as looking at some of my dad's old uh, movies. That because my dad was great with his uh, with his eight, eight millimeter uh, movies and all, and pictures of again of of relatives uh, visiting there and all that. I do remember. 
uh, I think fourth grade is a recollection I've got because that's when ba- Powell built their their second uh, elementary school, Parks Parkside Elementary, out in uh, uh, well near the manor where uh, where my mom spent her uh, her last years, and uh, they they split our class, and some of us uh, some of us went to fourth grade at Parkside, and then the the rest had to stay back at the on the the old. East side, but you uh, and Dave elementary. didn't get split up, did you? Yeah, no. Dave and I were were together there. So I remember uh, fourth grade too, because Parkside again there was a there was a big city park right across from it, and then in recess time, you know, we'd go across the street, and it was great for playing ball and whatever else for recess and all that. You know, so. one of my favorite stories and pictures to show sometimes in presentations is your report card that we we dug <laughs> out of the garage, you know, a few years ago at Thanksgiving. It's like your sec from that Cub Scout book thing that you did. Oh yeah. And your okay. second and third grade and Oh, okay. And yeah. uh a yeah. few comments, but in the signatures of your parents, so. Yeah. Oh, Tell yeah. me about your parents. What were your parents like growing up when you were in elementary school? Okay. Well, like I say my dad was was had the had uh, Friars Pharmacy, and uh, uh, a lot of recollections was just how hard he worked. Because uh, in those early days, the uh, the store would be I don't know what probably opened at eight or nine in the morning, but he would come home for dinner. We were very regimented in terms of uh, lunch, generally from noon to one, and then uh, supper generally around six. So and you my, come home from school for lunch? Uh, yeah. Well. I know as, as uh, in high school I did. I think I did. I, I don't really remember But it was that. a regimen. You kind of had yeah. a regular routine. But anyway, because I'm getting with, with my dad. I mean, he would come home, mom would have supper ready at 6, and then uh, he he would always lie down for about 10 or 15 minutes, take a, take a quick nap, and then he'd go back to the drugstore because it was open, uh, I think, during the week, maybe till 8, and sometimes on weekends till till 9 or 10. Uh, now, was, that Mar- was Mariah working there too, or was it him? No, by Mariah... Uh, uh, I don't know when Mariah stepped out. I don't. I don't have an exact date. That um, you remember, of course, only, only the 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 present location, or what used to be a Friars Pharmacy. The uh, and they built that the new store in um, sometime probably in the fifties. There used to be an older store that was a block south of there, but it had a soda fountain. And I remember. Uh, uh, my sister and and her friends used to work, uh, especially in the summertime, at the uh, soda fountain. I I barely uh, remember that, but I I mainly remember the the new new pharmacy. I used to work down there in the summertime, uh, or no, in the more in the uh, the Christmas season. Uh, you know, because uh, they always prided themselves on you know somebody would buy a Christmas present and they would they would gift wrap it and all that. I would help my dad as far as. I, th- I don't know if he had a maintenance crew or not. I remember having to to sweep and mop out that place occasionally. And I also remember our annual uh, January um, taking inventory. My dad was, uh, we'd have the whole crew and it would be on a, on a weekend and the store would be closed and we'd count uh, count all the, the merchandise and, and of course dad would always go to the pharmacy and I think he, he counted every pill of the place. I mean mm. he, he was very dedicated to doing that. My, my dad also uh, enjoyed sports. He participated uh, and uh, even before moving to Powell I think after college he played what was called uh, semi-pro ball. I think he was uh, maybe an infielder. But, uh, For baseball? When, yeah and then when I was uh, when I was in school, and we'll get into athlete, athletics later on, but they they were definitely uh, big supporters, not only for home games, but I think they went uh, uh, a lot of our away games too. And and we essentially traveled the state when when we were uh, playing. And of course, Wyoming being as, as you know, it's a large state. It's about si- the same size as Kansas, but. Uh, Population wise, then was probably well. I know Denver itself was bigger than the whole state of Wyoming, and even now, I think there's only three, four hundred, five hundred thousand people in the whole state. Did your dad teach you to golf? And you have any golfing yes. memories? That's a good point. I was thinking about that too. So my fir- my first memories uh, was just following my dad around when I was you know real young and perhaps early teenager, because um, <laughs> that. Uh, the course that Powell has now, of course, has grass greens and it's 18 holes. But in those days, 
uh, at Heart Mountain, which is halfway between Powell and Cody, was the original course. Nine holes, uh, sand greens, uh, sagebrush, and, and one of the stories I still sometimes tell people that I'm playing golf with that was uh, a time that uh, uh, Dad had teed off, and, and we get out to uh, where his golf ball was, and as we approach that, here's a a rattlesnake about four or five feet uh, long kind of curled up by his golf ball and so uh, he calmly set his golf clubs down and went back to the old green got the sand the uh, sweep that we used to use on the sand greens came and killed the golf killed the snake and then we kept playing and so I used to talk to people that's where that's where the the men are men and the snakes outdoors and so is the plumbing uh, my dad was also uh well, he was he was a businessman, real active though, uh, chamber of commerce in the in the community. To include when they when they bought the land for the new golf course, uh, the dad and about ten others went together and and uh, and bought that. And, and as well as there was, Pal had a rod and gun club, and I think he was he was instrumental in uh, doing that as well. So now, what did you hunt in Pal? Okay, my my dad what did not I I never went big game hunting with him, although you know Wyoming's noted for their their deer and antelope and, and elk. elk and all, but we were bird hunters, uh, primarily pheasants and um, uh, pheasants, quail, and and we go duck hunting too. So, Dad grew up in uh, eastern South Dakota in the heyday of of pheasant season. We've got some old black and white pictures. I don't even think there was a limit on pheasants, and I remember one picture seeing that that they they had strung these pheasants up, and they went from the from the uh, uh, front f- the front of the vehicle all the way over the top and all the way to the back. So, mm. um, and he always wanted to take me to, back to South Dakota for pheasant hunting, and, and we never did that. So. Now you had dogs growing up, were they bird dogs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, my sister, what's what was her dog's name? It was Tags which I don't remember all that well. The dog I had when when I was in school was a, a, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. His name was Tony, but he was he was a good dog. But he was uh, he he complimented my best friend Dave Bonner. Dave had a, a black lab, and and labs were uh, were uh, good dogs too. But uh, with with a, with a better nose than a Chesapeake. But Chesapeake's had excellent ears. And I can still remember partway through pheasant season when uh, when pheasants would get uh, get wings so they couldn't fly anymore, but they were a fast bird, you know, and so they would hide, and, and our dog would get down in a ditch, and, and he'd hear one wrestling. And there were sometimes when we'd come home and, and my mom would ask us how we did, and we'd say, well, the dog got one and we didn't get any. But, uh, so. <laughs> now, what kind of a gun did you have at that time? Your dad had the double barrel that you yeah, used he had later. The du- double barrel 12. My, I initially started with a... Uh, uh, 410, and then uh, oh, I'm a, I guess I was a teenager when they bought probably for Chris birthday or Christmas bought me a, a 20 gauge with, uh, and I had two different barrels on it, uh, a modified for for pheasants and then a full choke for uh, oh, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> a for, for, for ducks, or? for yeah, for, for ducks and all that. You so know, you hunted it, ducks as well. Yeah, yeah. And so my my dad, well, he, he'd go too. But uh, I, I can remember in high school when, um, especially with again back to Dave Bonner, we were we were best of friends later on, roommates at the University of Wyoming, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, that we would go uh, sometimes after school, we'd go uh, we'd go out pheasant hunting, and then. Uh, you know, and then on weekends we'd go either duck or pheasant in in season. So, hmm. so that was that was a big part of my life too. So, what was what was exciting about like life in Powell? Would you was there a hangout that people would go to, or what was? Uh, I mean, well, it was very small town America. Right? Oh, I kind of yeah. think of it, right? Yeah, probably in those days, uh, a couple thousand people. I don't. Maybe by the time I graduated in high school, it was up to to four or five thousand. But. Uh, um, in the summer times, I remember um, there was I had a couple of my classmates. One one of my classmates lived uh, across the alley from us. His name was Bill Ayers, and then another one, um, uh, Harold Moyer, lived a block away. And 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 Harold's dad was also a uh, a drug. In fact, as small as Powell was, we actually had three drug stores. We had Friars Pharmacy, and across the street was Moyer's Drug, and then and then down down. Was, the block was was another. I think that we had more drugstores in than they have now. No, so and talk about what a drugstore was, because it was more than just buying yeah. medication. Yeah, F- pharmacies, but but yeah, they would. Uh, of course, we didn't we didn't have like uh, 
Seven uh, Elevens and convenience stores and all that. So they they had a a variety of merchandise. Did they sell milk and bread and stuff. No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't do that. But uh, we sold. Oh, there was a lot of cosmetics. A lot of f- photography. People would come in uh, with their uh, um, Kodak film, and then they'd leave it there, and then they'd have to send it out to get processed, and then they'd come back and get that. I remember that was a a big part. But but the pharmacy was the the. Uh, uh, a major, major part of the whole thing. So, right. What do you remember about your mom? Oh, and I, um, very hardworking. Very, um, of course, she kind of set the stage, uh, especially around the house. Although my mom did help down at the uh, pharmacy too. I, I remember in later years she was. Uh, I think she was the bookkeeper. Because she would have her desk uh, off to the side of, of where my dad was working, as far as um, um, uh, filling prescriptions and all that. She was very a very religious person. We always we always had a, at breakfast. We had a, a daily devotional. We were Presbyterians, and uh, you know when, when she would he, she was the only the one who would read the Bible. I don't think my dad and I did much of that. And again, uh, and I'm haven't mentioned my sister all that much because again she was she was older and in, in the in 1946 is the year Marge graduated from high school that spring and and that fall is when I started first grade so my folks basically had had uh you know 24 years of the Powell school system between my sister and I my dad um was I don't know if my dad was ever on the uh, school board but my dad was uh we have a community college there still do and my dad was very active on that board. My my dad was very active also in um, uh, in the well, the, the Elks Club was in Cody, but uh, Masonic. He he was a Shriner, and my mom uh, uh, my mom was involved. We didn't have PEO in those days that I remember, but my my mom she had her activities uh, at the church. She was very active. In fact, one of the stronger recollections I have, my mom was. Uh, Sunday afternoon, um, we'd go to church in the mornings, I guess Sunday school and church, come home, she'd have um, Sunday dinner for us, and then as soon as dinner was over and the dishes were, were washed, the dining room table was spread out with the, the collection from the church, because she was a church treasure. And so, so and oh. I, I sometimes remember just helping her, you know, count stack, money. yeah, count money, stack coins and bills, oh. et cetera. And I don't know how many years she did that. And that was that. First Presbyterian Church? Uh-huh, in First Powell? Presbyterian Church there in Powell. So. Oh. Did your parents serve in the church? You said your mom yes. was a treasurer. Was your dad an elder? Yes, or yeah, he, he was very involved there. In the, and again, very, very... He was very community oriented, which I think I attribute my my involvement now in terms of volunteers. Because uh, the church, oh, I was reading. I, in fact, for for uh, for my Christmas present this year for my sister, there's a book out by Dave Bonner's uh, brother, Bob Bonner, on Pal's first hundred years, and it got an excellent index. And and Dad's name is listed in there on a number of things like what he did for this golf course what he did for the rod and gun club the the presbyterian church needed i, I don't know, new carpet it was ar fryer and others that uh that, that bought that as well too so what do you did your parents you said you did bible studies sometimes at at uh at meals what 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 devotion devotion devotional yeah. yeah what did what do you remember them sharing about their faith and what 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 did they talk about when it came to God, Jesus, faith? Yeah, and I, uh, I'm sure we did, but I I just don't, you know, re- re- I mean we were very regular church attenders. But, did you uh, go to eighth grade communicants class, kind of like I did, with that same pattern of yeah. joining the church then? Yeah, and yeah we did. Did Dave yeah. was Dave in your church then? Yeah, yeah, they've always been Presbyterian. Oh, yeah. So you so, grew up with him in school and in church. Yeah. Was the and, and and also in scouts too. And I remember our youth group uh when school was on, uh we would it was it was the uh, one of the best ones in town and after uh, uh you know after football practice in the fall or basketball practice during the winter then we'd come over to then instead of going home we'd go to uh, the church cuz they had like a a Wednesday night meal 
that they provided for yeah. everybody. And so it was a, it was a pretty strong, uh, and it was the church that sponsored our, our Boy Scout troop. Yeah. Again, Dave Bonner, John Bonner, Dave's dad, was our scout master. And he's, uh, I equate oh. John Bonner to what you remember as far as uh, a Ray Hightower, because John Bonner was a, John was a, a businessman. He had a, what was called a variety store, kind of right across the street from my dad's mm-hmm. uh, Rexall drugstore. But uh, boy, we'd go we'd go camping every every month of the year, whether it was the summertime and the the heat or the wintertime and the snow. And uh, he was uh, he was a great great scout leader. So I wanted to ask you about the Hawaii trip because you mentioned that. But what what other trips do you remember taking with your family? I know the Clark's Fork, and I think we're gonna have to let this dog out. Uh, I know. Can you I'm, can you stop this right now? Yeah, I think we can pause it. Ollie, you're not. Yeah, you're gonna have to go. Okay, you gotta get out. Come on. Ollie's getting too excited. <laughs> oh, that's smelling really good in there. So yeah, I'll ask you about uh, just like the Clark's Fork, and you want to tell tell the story about Graham in that one story as far as her crawling out when she yeah, broke her yeah, ankle or something. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start with that. Anyway. Okay, are you finished with this recording? No. Okay, so where did you, where would your family go, ar- like, around, I mean, you were right by Yellowstone Park, and I remember the you talked about the Clark's Fork, and I, there was a story you've told before about Graham when she fell. Uh, what, what, yeah. so where would you go? Did you guys go, you know, trout fishing and yeah, we would Yellowstone? Go. And, yeah, and my, my folks also, we had... Uh, well, and I'll contrast our family with the Bonner family. The Bonner family had a cabin. It was up the North Fork, uh, just fairly close to the East Gate and, and Pahaska. And so, so they kind of felt duty bound to always go there. Well, my folks, we would, we would, you know, go to the Bighorns. We'd go up to uh, uh, the Bear Tooth. We'd go down to Jackson Hole. So, in in that, we we would do quite a bit of traveling there. But specifically, the time with my mom. Uh, we were fishing, and it was the three of us, and we were up uh, uh, actually right by, I think, Beartooth Creek, actually, up by the, the Beartooth itself and the, where the water uh, comes out of there. But it was it was a deep canyon, and you had to go down these big boulders uh, to, to get down to where the fishing, but it, and so as a result, it kept the... Uh, uh, you know, the fishing was better down there because it was oh, harder to get to. Yeah, it was harder. You know, you people just wouldn't wouldn't want to uh, go all the way down there. Well, uh, my mom had a fall, and, and this really led to trauma. Really, the rest of her life because uh, she had a compound fracture of of her ankle. Compound where it was sticking out. Yeah, yeah, oh, it was gosh. really, and there was no way that my my dad and I could could carry her out of there. It was just a matter of of climbing over these oh, big boulders, man. and so. I, I still have the memories of her, you know, and of course, tears coming out of her eyes. It was very painful. I don't know how long it took us to get out of that canyon. And we loaded her in the car, put her in the back seat. You know, I think we maybe had some, some aspirin or something to give her. And we drove uh, from there. We had to go to, over the uh, uh, Cook City Beartooth Highway, come down to Red Lodge, went into Billings, Montana, uh, oh. and, and put her in, in the hospital. and. and oh, and and as like I no, say, no uh, helicopter medevacs back no, then. No, no. And uh, as a result, wow. because of that ankle, when when she would buy shoes, she had to buy two pairs of shoes. One because you know one for her good foot and one for her bad foot. So, mm. and that and that also back to another recollection of my mom uh, was was her eyesight because uh, she she you name eye problems she had it whether it was cataract surgery and I think because of this fall is when she ended up with a detached retina and, and had to have uh, that surgery up in Billings, too. In fact, I remember remember her in the hospital up there in the summertime in a, non, a non-air-conditioned hospital with just fans blowing, and she had to have her, her head... Uh, had sandbags on either side almost, okay, so she couldn't closer. she couldn't move her uh, her head. So right. and and then glaucoma was another thing. I could say just about every eye disease you could have. And of course, in those days, they didn't have the uh, as good a medical treatment as they have now. So now, would your family camp when you went to these places? Or did you stay in motels? <laughs> no, or? we would stay in we'd stay in cabins or motels. But like I say, it, rather than being just one place to go, I mean, we we did a lot. Uh, another thing in terms of trips. Um, my dad was, 
this would be uh i think it was either elks or rotary and i think it was rotary he was he was president of our rotary club but he, he was state president of one or the other which required us to to travel all around the state in fact summer times i remember we'd go on trips and uh you know, whether it was in wyoming or out of out of wyoming he had perfect rotary attendance for something like 15 or 20 years which is just unheard of now but he would always say, okay, uh, on this particular week, we're here, we're going to be, and their Rotary Club meets at noon on Tuesdays, and I'm going to lunch there, so so to make up Rotary, so I mean, that was... A... Did you ever encounter any bears any of the times you were out fishing or camping with scouts? No, or I don't like have that? any, I, I, maybe we saw them, but no, nothing dramatic and all to, to talk about. So. What, what, what are some of the highlights of your scouting? You went to the National Jamboree, that was one, right? Yeah, that's probably probably one of the, the bigger ones, and I did that, I was in high school, this would have been, I graduated in high school in 58, and I think the, the 56 National Jamboree was at, at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Neat, neat experience because it's my, my, my. As I look back, and again compared to you and and uh, your your world travels, I mean my travels in the U.S. Were, were rather limited too. But for that particular jamboree, every scout in Wyoming uh, met in Casper, and we uh, we met there and kind of organized and got our act together for I don't know several days. And then when it was time to take off, uh, we boarded a train in Casper. And I think we went to maybe, uh, I don't know, it was South Dakota or Nebraska, picked up others. Because I think there, there were scouts. Not, it wasn't just a Wyoming scout trip. But we went, I think we went first of all to uh, Chicago. I remember especially going to uh, Detroit and seeing maybe the Ford Museum and all. And then we went into Canada, and that was probably the first time I'd have ever been out of the country. Train went through Canada and came back to Niagara Falls from the Canadian side, saw that, went down to um, New York City for a couple days. Uh, my my one uh, really pretty strong memory of that, uh, on Mom's side of the family, and she had less brothers and sisters than my dad, but Bill Howard, which was one of her nephews, uh, at that time was working for Eastern Airlines. He was a vice president of Eastern. And here myself, and I took some of my buddies along, but so here's these teenage kids in scout uniforms went trace, tracing into the Eastern Airlines corporate offices and all. This is in Chicago? And, no, no, this is in New York City, downtown in, in Manhattan. Okay. And... Uh, before we sat down, uh, my uh, Bill Howard said, I want you guys to meet this gentleman around the corner. So we went around the corner and introduced and shook hands with this guy. And it wasn't until much later that I realized that I had the the opportunity to shake hands with... Um, Eddie Rickenbacker. Ed, yeah, Eddie Rickenbacker, yeah. yeah. And uh, who was and uh, was he a, was he the leading ace of, in World War II? Or oh, he, he, was, he was a noted... Yeah, he was he an was, ace, right? He was yeah, a, he was an ace, and, but he was also an auto racer too. I mean, he was very, very famous and all that. Well, in fact, I don't know if he may even been president of Eastern Airlines at that time. East Eastern later on left New York and went to Miami, and then and then of course got merged with somebody. But again, you know, ears got to, got to shake the hands and then realize later on who he was. And then I think from there, then we went to Valley Forge for the. Uh, for the jamboree, and at the jamboree, my one recoll or a recollection I have there is cousins uh, from California, uh, Roger and Steve Fryer. Their their dad, uh, Jim Fryer, who was one of my dad's brothers, were, they were all very active in scouting, and they were all there. And so we got to uh, I got to uh, meet up with uh, with them at that uh, at that jamboree at Valley Forge. And then after we left there, we went into D.C., which was the first time I'd ever been to Washington. And then on the way home, I think maybe I, we saw the arch. I guess we came through St. Louis, but you know it had been kind of a long trip. But it was it was as I say, uh, for a teenager for Wyoming to to not only go to the Jamboree but to see all those places was was right. very memorable. So, all right. so any other highlights from from scouting? You saw you said you guys went you went camping a lot. What patrol? You remember anything about like what patrol? You weren't in the Owl Patrol, were you? Were you in the vampires or was I? Oh, that was you. No, I wasn't in the vampires. I was in the owls. I was a member of the vampire patrol. So, uh, was Dave um, in your patrol too? 
No, I, I don't think so. Were you patrol leader, or do you remember any jobs yeah. you had, or, or yeah. uh, I think I, assume like I was a patrol. I, I was a. Uh, I I did not make Eagle Scout. I was I was a live scout, and in those days, it was the the required badges were there wasn't options at all, and I was not. Uh, uh, much of a swimmer at all, and so. Uh, but you what, didn't have a pool at that time, did you? Yeah, well, we we did, but then it would get shut down in the summertime because of polio. So I mean, we would sw- sometimes swim in the irrigation ditches and all that for uh, for the uh, pool. But that's so. As a result, I didn't I didn't have swimming the swimming merit badge. I didn't have life saving and all that. So what was it like to go to Alexander's Court of Honor a few weeks ago? Oh, that was such a such an honor to to uh, to be there and. Uh, See him finally following his his dad's footsteps to be an Eagle Scout. And of course, as we're speaking here, he's uh, he's in his senior year now of of high school and considering his options for where he'll go to college. So, uh, so let's talk. We'll talk a little bit about the high school and things. But let's go back to Hawaii because you told me yeah, you that had a would, big Hawaii trip. When yeah, was that? Besides besides the uh, that that trip we just got through talking about with with uh, National Jamboree. Uh, Hawaii was was the the bigger trip I remember. I was and and again with my dad having uh six sisters and three other brothers but uh so six sisters and three of them had gone to Hawaii. Yeah, well, and 9 of the 10 all graduated from South Dakota State Brookings. Uh, uh Jim, no, it was Russ Fryer went there one semester then got his engineering degree in North Dakota and then he moved to uh, Arizona, but three of them and this would be Alice and uh Elsie and Julia were the three sisters that I, th- I think after graduating, maybe they taught briefly in the States, but all three of them went to Hawaii. And my mom and dad had, uh, it was always, even when my sister was in school, it was saving up so we can we can go to Hawaii. Well, she, she then got married to Dick Wilder and moved to Cody and all. And so it was me that got to go. And I was, I was in um, the seventh grade when we went. And it was during the school year. I think it was February. When we went, which was a great time to get out of Wyoming, we uh, we drove up to Billings, Montana, got on uh, uh, Northwest airline plane that was a puddle jumper, flying to either Portland or Seattle. I can't remember where we flew out of, but I remember it was probably my one of my first airline trips, and it was rough. And I <laughs> I got I was some sick for because we would take off from Billings maybe and go to Bozeman and Bozeman. I mean, it seemed like we had to stop about three or four times to get out to the West Coast. Anyway, we get to Hawaii and we're gone three weeks. So we spend we spend a week with each one of the sisters and it was just really, really great. When we were with, um, uh, and, and two of the three didn't, uh, Julia did not have kids and Elsie didn't. But when we were with Alice Rogers, that's my two cousins, Tom Rogers, and also his older sister, uh, Alice J. Uh, Tom was in scouting out there, and I remember one weekend he took me on a on a, a camp out with the scouts, and we went to the uh, North Shore, and this was in the wintertime when they have their big waves. And I remember, uh, you know, from a kid from Wyoming being down there on the beach and seeing these big waves coming in and all that. So my, uh, I can't remember which one of the sisters took my folks to uh, Luau, but they, I don't know how much it cost, but they decided that was too expensive. I thought I wouldn't do it, so I had, you didn't I had get to, to, stay, go to luau. I didn't get to go to a to a luau on that trip. But anyway, it was it was a, and of course, I, I compare my notes with uh, with Angie and and when she went to uh, Hawaii with yeah, her folks. Yeah, because you both and, had Hawaii trips. Okay, and, and of course on. she went she went on a ship. And uh, were you I on the big island or on Oahu the whole time? No. Yeah, and I in all these years I don't know how I I. I probably should count up, but I've I've been to Hawaii, oh, better than five times, maybe not as much as ten. I have never been to any of the other islands. So oh, Oahu really? is the only island I've oh. ever I've ever been on. I mean, we had a Pearl Harbor tour or two, but did you anyway. go to Pearl Harbor on that trip when you were in high school? Uh huh. Yep. Yep. We did. So that was huh. that was that was probably a, a great trip. So when you became a pilot later, which we won't necessarily ask you a lot right now about that, but when when do you first remember? seeing planes and being exposed to aviation and did, did that have a an impact on you in terms of deciding to go to the Air Force Academy or what mm, what uh or, or no. military what what would you say were some of your influences obviously scouting but what else were influences in you ultimately deciding to, to go into the Air Force well to answer your question directly nothing really that related when I was uh I remember when I was in in high school 
my folks. I remember we sat down several several nights as far as, and and not just my senior year, but talking to me about you know my plans and and I know secretly my dad wanted me to follow suit and and take over the drugstore because the, the the timing was great at that time. It was I could go to the University of Wyoming, which my my brother-in-law Dick Wilder was a, a graduate. I think of the first school that went through the Wyoming pharmacy. But at that time it was only four years. A, six-year program now, but I mean, it would have worked out well. I could have done that, uh, probably had to, to be in the Army for a couple of years and then come come home and, and t- take over the uh, the uh, pharmacy for my dad. But he was always a, a thing I really credit him, and I've, I've hopefully uh, with with you and Trudy and now seeing with your kids as well to, you know, what what really appeals to them and what are their desires rather than force, forcing me to be a... Uh, a pharmacist, but uh, the other thing though about, and I remember talking about uh, the military academies then too. And of course, you know, we'd never been to, you know, Air Force Academy wasn't even in existence then. Um, and West Point and Annapolis, of course, being on the East Coast, never had seen those. But just the conversation that, okay, you've got to have a, an appointment from either a senator or a congressman. And, and my dad was fairly no, well known in the state that, you know, there was that political influence. And and it wasn't until after I graduated, went to the University of Wyoming that first year, which is a 58-59 school year, Wyoming, like K-State and others, was a land-grant school. And in those days, a male going to land-grant school had to take ROTC for two years. And you had your choice of either Army and Air Force. Well, Dave and a bunch of, a bunch of the fraternity guys were all in the Army. And for some reason, the Air Force appealed to me. I was about the only one that went in really? Air Force ROTC. And then that fall, um, the first class uh, for the Air Force Academy, class of 59, had just started... And um, of course, the they they were the, the they, they well, were would have graduated right. Did no, they no, they and... they were they were duallys, and they had they had started at. Um, uh, well, wait a minute. No, no, 58, 50, 54, The class first class was fifty nine. Yeah, you're so. right. Fifty eight, fifty nine. It would have been their senior year. Yeah, because they. But still, they were they were all going through in Denver at Lowry. Right. The, yeah. They were in the process then of building the permanent site in Colorado Springs. But the fall of fifty eight, Wyoming and Air Force. Played football in Colorado Springs, okay. and it was at it was downtown. It was at Colorado College. Oh wow! And so we left after classes on Friday. Did you take the train? No, no, we drove down. I think Dave and I and let's see, <coughs> excuse me, Jim Beaver was at, at Wyoming and Gerald Caribou were maybe it was the four of us. Anyway, we went down, spent Friday night in Denver. Saturday went down, went to the football game, and then toured through the construction at the Air Force Academy back to Denver and all. Hmm. But that, as I look back, that that and just going through Air Force ROTC probably were the stronger influences for me to want to want to hmm. go to the uh, to the Air Force Academy. So. Did, when did you get a car? What kind of car did you have? <laughs> and what kind I, of car did your parents have, I guess, too? Well, my, my, my folks always had Buicks. Well, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Another time. I remember... And this would be either in the in the late forties or fifties. We there um, they no longer make them, but there was a company called Kaiser Fraser, and we had we had a Fraser. And I remember one time, Dad, we'd gone to Red Lodge and we're going up the Red Lodge Cook City Highway, and there had been a rock slide, and Dad thought I can get I can go over that and uh, hit hit a rock, and it knocked a hole in our oil pan. And so we had uh, we got the car turned around and coasted back down the the, the mountain and all. And then, uh, but those cars were were the cars that um, well during the Korean War. Then in the early fifties, I think they stopped making cars and built tanks. <laughs> and those cars kind of looked like a tank. Really, they were not aerodynamically clean or anything. So, so. that's the car you remember your parents having growing up. Yeah, well, in those days, and then and then later on, we we had Buicks. I remember in the fi- and when I was in high school, I think is when we had. Now, did you have a car in high school? Nope, and I didn't have a car. I didn't have a car at Laramie, and and then of course when I was at at the Air Force Academy, I couldn't have a car till my senior year, and then is when I bought my uh, when we could we're allowed to have them. I bought a uh, had a Corvair Monza that would have standard transmission with four on the floor or whatever what it was. What color was it? Uh, maroon. <laughs> so it was. Uh, um, something else I remember about your dad. I don't know how much you can tell, but during the World War II, when when Japanese were interred, 
your dad was involved with some hearings and things that, about that. What What do you remember? Because you no. were young, right? That was you were. Yeah, I, I, so I researched it later. So I don't life. remember anything about it. But again, in the since we've been up, back up there, and they've got this visitor center now at Heart Mountain. Plus, again, this book that uh, that that Marge gave me on the hundred years and and reading into that and just because when when during the. Um, uh, the World War, and of course, after uh, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, December seventh of forty one, uh, there was a strong movement, especially for the West Coast, to to get the Japanese, uh, and they were they were American citizens, but they were Japanese American, and they they moved them they uh, from not only primarily California because that's where the majority were, but also Oregon, uh, Washington, move them inland, and there were. Oh, I think somewhere between 10 and 15 different camps. There was one in Arizona, one or two in Colorado, but the one in Wyoming was at Hart Mountain. And in the height of that war, the first ones came in in either 42 or 43, and then uh, they left before before the war finally ended in 45. But Hart Mountain was the third largest uh, community in the state of Wyoming. Cheyenne and Casper were larger, and then there was Hart Mountain. Well, it presented a dilemma to that area, uh, Park County includes both uh, Powell and Cody. But you know, uh, near after they were established for a while, and we realized, hey, they're they're peaceful people. I mean, they're American citizens and all, and and so I guess they could get passes or something coming in the communities, and it it really split Powell, I know, and probably Cody too. But my dad was on the uh, on the side, and he's documented in these uh, these books I've read about it of he and. And a handful of other businessmen, you know, said, "Okay, hey, well, they should be allowed to to come into Pal." So, hmm. so, so it wasn't about closing the camp, but it was about freedom for them to be able, yeah, to, because yeah. people were fearful yeah. of if they yeah. would sabotage. And or, some of, in fact, uh, when I graduated high school in 1958, we had less than less than 100 in my high school class. Uh, but there were uh, there were t- two Japanese. In fact, our our best football uh, player Eddie Kawano was uh, was Japanese, as was our starting what right guard uh, Stan Takeuchi. That uh, uh, both football and uh, and basketball, they were and baseball as well. They were you know they were good friends. Eddie, you so. said the first one you mentioned. Yeah, he's in that picture of you from third grade or whatever. You know that, that that's right. That, yeah, uh, yeah. In that book. So. Now I don't think it'll shut off after forty-five minutes, but we, we I don't know how much longer we want to we want to go. But we want to talk oh. about sports. Yeah, sports and, were always important to you. You said your dad played like semi-pro or or some some yeah. something it was, baseball. Uh, yeah, and he played in college. Um, I probably did. I I don't remember that. I just I just remember the, the semi-pro and Friars Pharmacy uh, uh, sponsored softball teams, and he, and he played with that. I might have been the the bat boy for that, but. Uh, the sports I remember probably would be starting in uh, in junior high, uh, and I was on the, I was a backup quarterback on our, our junior high uh, uh, football team, and then and again to set the stage of, of sports in the fifties compared to now. I mean, uh, we did not have a tennis team, we did not have a golf team, we did not have a soccer team, and all it was in in the fall. If you were a man, oh, and, and also women's athletics were almost non-existent too. Did you play eleven so, man football? Yeah, but the uh, in the fall it was football. In the winter that was your only choice because you either could play basketball or be a wrestler. In the spring track was the only thing, and then we didn't have baseball team in, in high school either. It was the summertime. It was American Legion baseball that we played and so it was the thing to I, I wasn't much of a track guy but but I loved football I think basketball basketball and baseball were probably my my two best sports but if you want to play football we had the same coaches in track that and so they, they forced you to go out well field events uh, pole vault uh, high jump I wasn't good in that I wasn't a sprinter so I ended up being a miler but um, and I it turned out my I guess it was my junior year that I I won our uh our district, uh, the district mile, and I won't tell you my time, which was was <laughs> horrendous compared to what they do now. And then, and luckily though, my my senior year. You still remember your time though? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to make my, you say it. My <laughs> uh, my se- my senior year uh, during basketball season, my senior year, I started having uh, stomach problems and all, and so uh, finally after the season was over, they determined that. Uh, that if the, if my appendix came out, that that would solve my problem, which it did, and it also solved the problem. Is I didn't have to run the mile then because I for your cause, senior cause I, I yeah because I had just you know it was recouping during track season. Yeah. Although my high school, 
as 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 seniors we we won state football and i was the quarterback of that team but then uh and we did well on track too i think we won district both years both junior and senior but our senior we actually won the state championship in track but of course i wasn't i was so you were the quarterback of the football team when you were state champions yeah. And Biff Beck has pulled some of those films, right, that you now oh, have yeah. on DVD. Yeah. In basketball, what did you play? Were you center or forward or guard? I was one of the taller guys in the team. I think we we played. We didn't really have a, a center. We had, uh, say, three guards and two forwards, and I was one of the forward. One of my, my claims to fame, though, my, my uh, senior year, I, I was the top rebounder in our team, and we had a uh, – there was a, a – and I got an award for it because uh, – uh, I broke the uh, school record for the uh, for the number of uh, rebounds in in one season later to be broken uh, several years later by somebody else. But uh, but anyway, so and then um, you were a pitcher for baseball, right? Primary, yeah, I was a pitcher, and then when I wasn't pitching, I generally played left field. So and then and that was throughout middle school and high school, or when did baseball? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think when uh, yeah, because we play. I, uh, okay, back to uh, my, my I, I remember baseball or organized baseball earlier than I do the others because we had Little League. Little League was when you were, what, 10, 11, and 12. And I remember, and we had we had a pretty good Little League team that would compete in the Bighorn Basin. Uh, I remember when when we went up at the big boys that would go up to, uh, to Billings because 100 miles away, Billings was the... Uh, 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 they'd have a tournament up there, and we'd voice uh, d- didn't fare too well against uh, against those guys. But that was that was little league 10, 11, 10, 11, 12, and then after that, I guess it was was American Legion. So, so we're gonna wrap up with the with the last story. Tell me something that you remember a real highlight of sports. You know, from all the different sports that you played. Did you have well, a favorite, by the way, of all those sports? Oh, kind of in season, really. I mean, the fa- fact that we won a state championship in football would, would probably... The year before, um, we had some good players ahead of us, and we went to the state championship uh, our junior year and played in the state championship game, and who did we play but our rivals of Cody, and we'd already beaten them two out of three times that year, but they uh, they they won the fourth one, and, and they were state champions that year. So, I mean... So, who did you beat the se- the your senior year when you were state champions? Who, what... Do you remember and, who you played? You mean in, in, well, in football? In football, yeah. We, we had to go to Rollins uh, in the semifinals. We played both both games away from Powell. We went to Rollins, played them, and that was that was actually our closer game in the state championship. We went to Torrington, and we beat them big time, 40, 46 to 10 or Did something like that. Did you score running uh, touchdowns oh, in I the game? I might have done a quarterback sneak or something <laughs> like that. But, uh, Were you more of a passer, or did, did was Eddie the, the workhorse of the yeah, team? I had, or what? Well, yeah, yeah, I had. Uh, yeah, the, for, the future All-American? Yeah, he, All-American. He, well, he was a high school All-American. Oh, he said. was a high school Yeah, and got drafted uh, Wyoming wanted him to play. In fact, Bob Devaney was still coach at, at Wyoming during those days, and uh, wanted him to come there. He, he actually went to Utah, I think. But uh, you no, know, so my my days were primarily handing off, and and I look <laughs> back, and I wasn't even much of a passer either. So, but I would, wow. but we play. I mean, we had some tremendous athletes in my class. Like I say, to 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 go to the state championship as juniors in basketball, and then and then as seniors to win win. A state championship twice, once in football and once in track. So, so, so is that about it? That's not, well. If your if your great grandchild or your great great grandchild listens to this, which who knows with digital technology, <laughs> what what advice do you have for them about what you learned growing up in Powell, well, learning and growing up in that small community well, like you did? Yeah, I mean, to this day, I'm I'm probably as close or closer to my high school classmates as I am to my to my classmates at, at well, I mean, but, but athletics. So I, I attribute uh, a lot to that as far as, as far as, uh, you know, teamwork, uh, camaraderie, a brotherhood that the military talks about. I mean, I, I learned an awful lot of lessons from, and I, I haven't even touched upon my coaches, but I, uh, I don't remember my academic, uh, 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 teachers as much from high school as I did. Well, and of course, coaches also did. I mean, Louis Conkey, who was uh, uh, a great, great friend uh, and was track coach and state championships and all, but he was our chemistry fe- uh, physics uh, teacher, so I remember him. Keith Bloom, I'd like to include in this because my my role model of all my coaches was Keith Bloom. I still remember, you know, growing up when when Keith was in high school and he would he would come through my yard and I was a little guy and I had, had a basketball court there. And Keith would get the ball. 
you know, and he'd go up and, and toss it in the, I mean, he could probably dunk. And, you know, I was, I'd always looked up to him as, uh, even, even after when I, and in fact, he just died a couple of years ago. And I, I saw him, I think, uh, a couple of months before he passed away. So, so, I mean, th- those co- coaches as role models had a tremendous impression on, so yep. for that to them. Good way to so. enter. Thank you for sharing those memories. And that was 45 minutes? 49 minutes and 24 seconds. Yep. Wow. Okay.